The new iPads have LiDAR, and when I first saw this feature, I had three questions about it. The first question being, well, does it actually work? So those are the laser dots coming off of the LiDAR. That's pretty cool. And those are the laser beams shooting right into my camera. The second question was, will the LiDAR make augmented reality a little better? I know this may seem trivial, but that marker in the middle of the screen is actually following the faces of the floor, the wall, and this shoe thing, which doesn't work as smoothly on other iOS devices. And the third question that I had was, will having a LiDAR make augmented reality a little more useful? Overall, I think for Apple, it will be, but for the actual iPad, I'm not quite so sure. So in the next few minutes, well, I'm gonna do a deep dive on LiDAR. At Mobile Reviews, eh? Monty and I base all our videos on actual usage, which means actually trying to figure out if the LiDAR actually works. Now we could go just regurgitate the marketing fluff, but what's the point of a video that's just that? Now LiDAR stands for Light Detection and Range. Now this technology really isn't that new on the iPad since the Drew camera kind of uses a form of LiDAR from my perspective. Basically, a LiDAR shoots a bunch of lasers at a target and then it just records the intensity and the time that it takes to get back to the sensor. Now LiDAR has been around commercially since I'll say the late 90s really. I think it really took off in the late 2000s with the creation of very complex 3D models for engineering and facility as building as well as 3D mapping and for the last few years it's been a staple technology for automated driving cars. Now as a side note, when it comes to automated cars and Elon Musk and the Teslas and stuff, he thinks using LiDAR is dumb or cheating, one of the two. Now as a side question, when was the first time you heard the term LiDAR? I'll answer that at the end of the video, but I'll do all the good stuff before that. Now with the new 2020 iPad Pro, Apple has included LiDAR on the rear facing camera. Now it's not officially part of the Pro camera system, according to the website, like it's got the Pro and then below it is the LiDAR, which is kind of why I didn't include this LiDAR portion in my last video. Now I spent several hours using a variety of different AR apps on the App Store and really couldn't find one that showed me anything unique about the LiDAR. Those AR apps on Apple's website are pretty cool and putting a waterfall down on a table is pretty neat, but we've been able to do that for a very, very long time. I really wanted to see something different with with the uh, LiDAR. And a lot of those apps haven't actually been updated in the last few months, so they're probably not using laser beams to help them guide where the waterfall should go. Now the only tool that showed me a visible improvement over the old iPads and actually all the other iOS devices I used was Apple's own measure app. Have you used it yet? It's not cool, but it's pretty useful if you just, just watch. Now to get to the next part, I spent way too much time measuring, well, this table with an iPhone 7, 8 Plus, 10s Max, 11 Pro Max, as well as a 2018 iPad and the new 2020 iPad Pro. Now for each device, I would trace the table by walking around it, record the measurements, and then trace the object again by standing still. Now here's what this new device does better. The iPad Pro not only snaps to corners, but also to straight edges. The second thing is that it also detects straight edges, which is cool. And the last one that I'll say is that it can easily detect the faces of an object. Now one would assume that the newer devices like the 11 Pro Max would produce better results. And that was not the case. The iPhone 7 and 8 actually were the simplest to use. They were the least fussy when it came to trying to figure out the corners and their idea of where they were, their self-awareness in terms of 3D space wasn't that bad. It actually got worse as the newer, as the devices got newer for some odd reason. The LiDAR on the iPad Pro allows it to really figure out where it is in 3D space, which is pretty cool. Now I was thinking that on the iPhone 11 Pro Max, I've got this seal leather case on it. That's why it's so bright. I was thinking that because there's so many cameras that it would do a bit of stereo photogrammetry because you kind of, it knows the distances between the cameras, so you're able to kind of figure out depth from it. Um, but yeah, no, it doesn't happen. The best example I can show you with the LiDAR is, well, face detection on like objects. For example, on this HomePod box on the new iPad Pro, it can detect the different faces of the box. You can't do that with the 2018 iPad and the iPhone 11 Pro still has a pretty hard time trying to figure out what's being perpendicular to that surface. So that's the LiDAR in action. It actually works, which is pretty cool. Now the reason why LiDAR produces better results, I think can be explained through passive imaging and active imaging. On all the other iOS devices, including the 11 Pro Max, everything is done through passive imaging. So it's just collecting information as it falls on its sensor. And then it's like, this is what I think it is, it's my best guess, it's a pretty good guess. Now with LiDAR, it's actually, phys I don't wanna say physically touching, but it is sending laser beams and it's recording those laser beams back. So it's 
interacting with the device that you're trying to scan. It's almost like me looking at Monty and being like, I think that's a dog. I think that is a dog sitting on a chair. That's what you guys see. You guys see Monty, a dog sitting on a chair, but you don't know that. You're just passively absorbing that information. For me, I can go and physically and touch him and know that this is Monty sitting on a chair. Now, before we get to the rest of this video, this is the first time watching one of my videos, I do encourage you to click subscribe, do a lot of product reviews, product tech videos. Uh, this is part of the coronavirus series, which is me producing content every single day. So instead of once a week, it's seven times a week, which means it's a lot more work. Now, as a side note, as I was trying to figure out all this AR stuff, if you Google an animal, um, you might actually get an AR animal. And that works on these smartphones, but not those tablets. I don't know why. And the only reason why I know this is as I was doing this video, my kid asked me to draw him a penguin. I was like, I have no idea what a penguin looks like. So I decided to look up an image and it's like, hey, it's an AR penguin. I can go look at it in augmented reality. Still didn't help me draw it, but you know, just so you guys know. So many things I learned in this video. The Measure app actually detects surfaces, not surfaces, like objects and like, windows and stuff, which is pretty neat. Another example of how great the iPad Pro does in trying to figure out where it is in <laughs> in space is that if you take the measure app and you, for this table anyways, I discovered that if you just point at it, you can actually just have the measure app automatically create you a rectangle instead of me having to trace it out. With this 11 Pro, it did a pretty good job of trying to figure out the space where it was. But then when I moved it around, it just like, it just fell apart <laughs> and it didn't even get the like dimensions right. It was like four times the size. So on your iOS devices, give that a try. If you got a table, just like pull it over the top and it'll try to figure out what the rectangle, it does a really good job of rectangles. <laughs> so how useful is the LiDAR for AR on the iPad? It's, it works. I've just shown you that but I don't know how useful it is. And my biggest problem with all of this is that despite the fact that I can project a penguin <laughs> on the floor is that I don't think it's really augmented reality. It's an alternate reality because I'm still interacting with that reality through a device, right? My hands are still tethered to this device. So like doing this all the time everywhere, that's, I don't think that's augmented reality. Like I think for augmented reality to really succeed for us and businesses and normal consumers to really see the benefit of it, it has to be on our glasses and our hands have to be free. Cause then it's not my arms and my device interacting with that reality, it's just my eyes, right? I'm just gonna go look at this and things start to show up. In order for that to happen, we need to have that technology. I know Google Glasses and Google Glasses 2 had a good kick at the can to it. The Microsoft HoloLens, I think is doing fairly well, but you know, no one's gonna wear the HoloLens in public and be walking around in, unless you're a terrible geek. You know, it might as well, I might as well just be wearing a hockey helmet while I drive. People are just gonna look at me very, very funny. I know with LiDAR, it's kind of like a trickle-in technology. I don't know, again, not that useful on the iPad, I don't think. Will it be useful on the iPhone 12? Maybe, you know, smaller form factor, a little easier to use the measurements and everything, um, but it's still, you're interacting with the devices. It's really not augmented reality in my perspective. I think the third step that Apple needs to take after introducing LiDAR to us now, that's the second step, is that they need to be able to put it in their eye bifocals or eye lenses or eye goggles or eye Googles. <laughs> <laughs> the next thing so that our hands again are free to do whatever we need to do and the information just kind of shows up on our face. And I think when we get to that point, that will be the apex of AR because that will be the perfect intersection of our physical world where we are now and the digital world, which is what you're watching this video on. It will be that perfect intersection, that apex. That is where AR should go because AR apps right now are kind of lame. AR games are completely dumb. And that's all I got <laughs> for my opinions on AR. So those first time watching one of my videos, I do encourage you to click subscribe. This is part of the coronavirus series where I produce content every single day. This is a brutal video to produce. I'm gonna, it's seven o'clock in the morning. I'm gonna try to produce this in five hours. So yeah, uh, click subscribe. Cause yeah, doing awesome things on this channel. Thanks for watching. So the first time I was introduced to the term LIDAR was in 1995. I was a sprightly, sprightly is the wrong word. I was 14 years old um, and 
I learned about this term from this show called Space Above and Beyond. I loved that show as a kid. And the only reason why I loved it was that it played at times that I could use the TV. I wasn't allowed to watch a lot of TV. And so none of my parents' shows were in that time slot. Uh, second was that all the females were clothed. <laughs> Apparently that was a big thing for my mom. <laughs> and the third thing was that it was on the sci-fi channel. And I didn't tell my parents it was the science fiction channel, I said it was the science channel. And my parents, being the Asian tiger parents that they were, they're like, oh, he's watching a good intellectual television show. Eh, uh, kind of, yeah, but no. Uh, but there was this episode where they, the enemy had this stealth fighter and they're like, it doesn't show up on our LiDAR sensors. And I was like, cool, LiDAR, it sounds so awesome. And then eight years later when I was doing LiDAR for work, I was just like, there's actually almost no way that you could have a LiDAR radar in space, maybe? I don't know, I'm still kind of working through that. But that's kind of the first time I was introduced to LiDAR. How about you guys? Leave it in the comment section below. And hopefully it's not this video. And if it's this video, I'm glad that I was the one to introduce you to LiDAR. So the new iPads have LiDAR. So the new iPads have LiDAR. So the new iPads have LiDAR. I'm saying LiDAR really weird. So the new iPads have LiDAR. There we go. So the new iPads have LiDAR. And when I first saw this feature, I had three questions about it. So the next few minutes, well, I'm going to do a deep dive on LiDAR. I'm still saying that weird. And we'll buy reviews, eh? Monty and I base all our videos on actual usage, unlike other tech channels that just regurgitate marketing fluff. Well, I don't know how we actually win against them, since I'm actually doing it and they just regurgitate marketing fluff. And even the iPhone 11 Pro has a pretty hard time trying to figure out what face the box is on. Can you hear that crow? That's so annoying. <laughs> With the LiDAR, the act... <laughs> This is the image, and this is what I think the image is, whereas in with active imaging, it's going to be like, yeah, this is the image, this is what I am doing, and I'm touching that. It's not great. We're going to try this explanation through the last time. So the reason why LiDAR... So how useful is the AR? I really hope I'm still recording. Honestly, AR for businesses is a big thing, but even then, I don't know how useful it is, right? The biggest problem when it comes to all this augmented reality is that most businesses do not have a good data model in order to build this technology up. It looks cool, but the amount of work that it takes to build something that can do that AR stuff, you need to have an amazing data model, amazing data management, amazing information management. That's all stuff that I used to do as a consultant. And most of these businesses, even these gigantic oil and gas companies make hand over fist money, like buckets money, well not now anyway, but they did back then. They don't, they have such poor information management practices. They're like, you would think, no, nah, I'm not gonna get into it. So in order to see that dot matrix, we'll say, or the points from the laser scanner, this is actually my first video camera that I bought in 2001. So that's 19 years ago, and I'm glad I didn't throw away. This is the iPad Pro, and right now I've got it on the measure tool. And you can't really tell, but it's spewing stuff out from there. But if we go, turn off all the lights, you can definitely see on the old camcorder, the uh, dots coming off of the, uh, the iPad Pro. If we beam right into it, right into the sensor, probably not good for it, but... That's pretty neat. So guys, I just want to elaborate on how I was able to capture kind of that that dot pattern coming off of the, uh, the LiDAR. This is a really old camera, as I said before. It's all, almost 20 years old. And they have this thing, it's a Sony, called Night Shot. And it, it's not night vision per se. It is, the sensor is just sensitive to infrared light. And so with the, uh, with the LiDAR, the, uh, the laser dots that come off of the scent, the emitter um, can be read by these infrared sensitive cameras. And so that's kind of how I've been able to capture the, uh, the infrared or the laser dot pattern. And it's kind of hard to see. I'm going to kick this with my foot 
and turn the light off again. But there is a lot of other patterns that come off of it. Like it's just not the square. It's also some of the other uh, reflections. So it's a pretty big uh, diameter in terms of all the information that the uh, iPad Pro is collecting. So that's kind of how I was able to capture that image.